Hey everyone, uh, we are now starting to wrap up the school year. Uh, we will have two weeks of schoolwork left, of assignments left, and then after that there'll be a little bit of time to finish things up, but there won't be anything new um, after those two weeks. So our plan, my plan, is to have you do three review uh, lessons, practice problems, three sets of, of, of short videos and practice problems, and then uh, take a little assessment on everything. The first review is going to focus on right triangles, which deals with the Pythagorean theorem, trigonometry, special right triangles. Um, and so that was all stuff that we actually co covered first semester. The second review is going to be dealing with polynomials, adding, subtracting, multiplying, factoring, solving by factoring. And then the third review is going to be dealing with graphing. Uh, and domain and range. So how to graph a parabola and how to graph a line because those are two essential functions that you have to go into Math 3 mastered with. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with our review of right triangles. For question number one, we're looking for the length of the third side. Remember, to find the length of a th the third side of a right triangle, this only works for a right triangle, we use the Pythagorean theorem, which says leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Remember, the two legs are the two sides that are the two shortest sides, and the hypotenuse is the longest side. So you have to be careful with this. Um, I actually don't like this example problem so much because um, it it leads students to believe a certain rule in all three numbers that isn't necessarily true. So I want to really emphasize this here. We want to emphasize, or we want to identify the legs and the hypotenuse. The x is the hypotenuse because it's the side that's opposite the right angle, or it's the longest side. So remember the Pythagorean theorem said leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. It's not number squared plus number squared equals letter squared. Okay, nowhere did I say that. It's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So if this 4 was an x, and this x was like a 10 or something like that. Let's pretend this is a 4. Let me, let me go ahead and change this real fast just so you can see what I'm talking about. If I said this was the case, if I had a, an x in one leg, a 6 in the other leg, and a 10 in the hypotenuse, then you'd set this up as x squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. Why? Because x and 6 are the two legs. They're the two shortest sides. So it's always leg squared plus leg squared, and then the longest side is the hypotenuse, so it's hypotenuse squared. Now, in our case, in our case, we don't have that. Um, what we have is the x in the hypotenuse. So our setup here would be 6 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared, or 4 squared plus 6 squared equals x squared, as long as it's leg squared plus leg squared. Remember order of operations first, so first we're going to do uh, exponents in this case, so 4 squared is 16 and 6 squared is 36. Then we're going to combine those like terms, 16 and 36 is 52. And then to get rid of the square, we're going to square root both sides. So we have a couple different forms that we could leave this in, but notice the instructions here say give your answer in simplest radical, and it should say form, simplest radical form. If we were to put this in decimal form, it would be 7 point something because 7 squared is 49 and 8 squared is 64 and 52 lies between 49 and 64. But we don't want it in decimal form, so it's not gonna, we don't want to write it as 7 point something. We want to simplify the radical. Remember, to do that, you need to factor the 52 completely. Well, 52 factors to 2 times 2 times 13. And because this is a square root, remember the root index here, uh, there's nothing there, so that implies it's a 2. That means we're looking for the square root. We're going to circle any pairs that we have. We have a pair of 2s. Remember, one of those goes outside the radical. The other one disappears. So we're left with 2 rad 13. And the units on this would be feet. For number 2, um, we have the same type of problem. We're looking for the missing side of a right triangle. We need to identify the two legs, and again in this case, the two legs are the 9 and the 15 because those are the shortest sides, not because they're both numbers, but because they're the two short sides. The x in this case is the longest side. It's the side that's opposite to or across from 
the 90 degree angle. So in this case, it'd be 9 squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. So that'd be 81 plus 225 is x squared. That uh, simplifies the 306. And then we're going to square root both sides and factor the 306. The 306 factor is a 2 times 3 times 3 times 17. Um, other teachers teach factoring a little different. So maybe you do a factoring tree or you do the cake method, as some, some teachers call it. But here you can see we have a pair of threes. So our answer is going to be taking a three out. Okay, we have a three going out. And the two and the 17, they're going to stay inside. So we're going to multiply those together. And so we'd end up with three rad 34. The units on this are meters. All right, let's go ahead and get into special right triangles. Here we are looking for the lengths of the two missing sides here, and we are, want our answers in simplest radical form. Well, what I notice is that this triangle is a, a right triangle because I got the, right, the 90 degree angle here, and then I have a 45 degree angle here. So that's going to beg the question, that's going to force us to answer the question, what kind of angle is this other angle? Well, remember that the three angles in a triangle always add up to 180. So 90 plus 45 is 135. We'll subtract that from 180 and we get 45 for this angle. This is actually a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is a special right triangle. Because these two angles are congruent to each other, that implies that this is isosceles. That implies that the two legs are going to be congruent to each other. And so you have to remember the parent triangle, the parent 45, 45, 90 triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another 45, 45, 90 triangle in the same orientation. And I'm going to remember the um, parent values. Remember the parent values were 1, 1, and rad 2. And you could use any values you want, but then you'd have to do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the other values. And that's okay. But we're going to use the simplest values. If this side is 1, we know this side is 1 because those two sides are the congruent sides because they're the two sides across from the two congruent angles. And then when we do the Pythagorean theorem on this, it would be 1 squared plus 1 squared equals x squared. And then when we simplify that, we'd get rad 2. But with that said, we can set up proportions now because these two triangles are similar. So we would pick a side in this triangle. In my case, I pick B. B corresponds with 1. They're in the same position. They're both between the 90 degree and the 45 degree. So it goes with 1 here. So it's going to be B over 1. And then we're going to set up another ratio between the two sides that we know. Well, we know 8 and rad 2 go together because those are the two hypoten hypotenuses, hypotenai. Um, remember, because I put B on top, everything from this triangle has to be on top. So since B is on top in the first fraction, that means 8 has to be on top of the second fraction. From here, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm going to just go the standard route and cross multiply, and I'll explain more later. If I cross multiply here, I get b times rad 2, or rad 2b, however you want to look at it, equals 8. And then I need to get b by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by rad 2. So when I divide both sides by rad 2, what I notice is that now I have a radical in my denominator, and that's not an acceptable answer. So to get rid of that, remember, you have to multiply by rad 2 over rad 2. Well, that gives me an 8 rad 2 on top, because you can't multiply those out because one's in a radical and one's not. And then on the bottom, you can multiply these because they're both in radicals. You would end up with radical 4. Well, radical 4 is just 2. So we end up with 8 rad 2 over 2, and then we can simplify this now because the 8 is outside the radical and the 2 is outside the radical. We can reduce that to be 4 radical 2. Now from here, we need to find A, and we can set up the same type of work. We can set up proportions to find A, but what I notice is that in the parent triangle, the two legs are congruent to each other which would imply that in this triangle, the two legs are congruent to each other. And therefore, A will be the same value as B for radical 2. All right, for number 4, we're going to do the same type of setup. We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle here. I'm going to draw a parent triangle, and I'm going to put my values for that parent triangle in the proper places. Because this is 45, 45, 90, I'm going to do 1, 1, rad 2. And then I'm going to set up the proportions to find one side. So I'm going to say X over... 1, because those correspond, equals rad 10 over rad 2. Um, actually, I, I want to go back to number 3 for a second. Back in the original problem, when I had b over 1 equals 8 over rad 2, in this case, I didn't have to actually um, cross-multiply, because b over 1, that simplifies to just b. 
And so I would end up with b equals 8 over rad 2, which is exactly what I had, and I just needed to rationalize it. So in this case, I can do the same exact thing. I notice that I have x over 1. Does it always have, is it always over 1? No. If um, the x value was the hypotenuse, then it would be x over rad 2, because the rad 2 is the hypotenuse. But in this case, it is. So we can just say x over 1 is x. That's simple enough. And then the rad 10 over rad 2, because they're both inside radicals, I can divide those. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and it would be inside the radical. That's my answer. x equals rad 5. And as a result, because y is also a leg, um, it's going to be the same thing there. Because these legs are congruent, these legs will be congruent. So x and y both equal rad 5. Again, that's not always the case. It just happened to be in these two types of problems. All right, for number five, we have another special right triangle. We have a 90 degree angle and a 60 degree angle. So when we do the triangle sum theorem, when we find the missing angle, what angle has to be here to add up to 180? Well, 90 plus 60 is 150. Subtract that from 180, we end up with 30 there. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's a special right triangle. Uh, 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 are the two special right triangles. So remember the parent values of the 30, 60, 90 are 1, 2, and rad 3, where 1 is the smallest length. If you compare all three of these values, we can see that 1 is smaller than 2, and it's smaller than the square root of 3. So it is going to be across from, it's going to be opposite to the 30 degree angle because 30 is the smallest angle. Now from here, the 2 and the rad 3, well, which number is biggest? The biggest number is 2 because the square root of 3 is less than 2. How do I know that? Because if I was going to write 2 as a radical, it would be the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Well, because the square root of 4 is greater than the square root of 3, that means 2 is greater than the square root of 3. So the 2 is my hypotenuse. It's going to be across from the 90. And then the radical 3 is always opposite to the 60 degrees. From here, we'll set up our proportions. Now, what I notice is that the side length that I gave is really disgusting. It's already a fraction. But don't let that intimidate you. You should still be okay with this. We're just going to pick a side. So I, I picked A. A corresponds with 2. They're both the hypotenuse. And now I'm going to set up another ratio for the sides that I know. So since I put A on top, I have to put 8 rad 3 over 3 on top. And then that's going to all be over 1. And so you can see you have this, this fraction over another number. You go, that's disgusting. I don't like that. And I get it. But there's a, a few ways to look at this that actually simplifies it pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead and cross multiply here. A times 1 is just A. That's nice. And then when I multiply 8 rad 3 over 3 times 2, I'm just going to write it out. I don't have to do everything in my head all at once. I'm going to write it out. 8 rad 3 over 3 times 2. Well, how do I multiply fractions? I multiply fractions by making, making sure the two terms are written as fractions. So I'm going to put it 2 over 1. And then when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So 8 rad 3 times 2 is 16 rad 3, and then 3 times 1 is 3. And so we end up with A equals 16 rad 3 over 3. The denominator is already rationalized, and we can't simplify anything from here. We cannot reduce the 3 on top and the 3 on the bottom because 1's in a radical and 1 is not. So that's my answer. For B, I can't just assume that it's going to be the same thing like I did in the previous problems because A was the hypotenuse and B is the leg. Those aren't going to be the same. So I've got to set up the work all over again. So I'm going to set up B over rad 3 because those correspond equals, again, 8 rad 3 over 3 all over 1. Or if I wanted to, I could have said 16 rad 3 over 3 all over 2 because I now know the A value. But regardless, I'm going to cross multiply here. I end up with B, so that's nice. And then 8 rad 3 over 3 times rad 3. Again, put the rad 3 over 1. Now, how do I multiply this? Well, multiplying straight across, 8 rad 3 times rad 3, and then over 3 times 1. Well, rad 3 times rad 3 is just 3. So I end up with 8 times 3 on the top, which is 24, 
and 3 on the bottom. Again, slowing that down. Rad 3 times rad 3 is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So putting these two multiplying together is 3. Multiply that by 8, and I end up with 24. Well, 24 over 3 is just 8, and so that is my value for B. Let's go ahead and take a look at another problem, number 6. Again, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Remember, the 1 is always across from the smallest angle. The 2 is always across from the biggest angle, the hypotenuse. The 2 is the hypotenuse. And the rad 3 is always across from the 60. We'll set up uh, proportions here. So u over rad 3 equals 20 over 2. Cross multiply here, you get 2u equals 20 rad 3. And then divide by 2, so you end up with u equals 10 over, or sorry, 10 rad 3. For v, we would say v over 1 equals 20 over 2. We could cross multiply here, and that's fine if we do. But ultimately, we're going to get v equals 10 because, well, v over 1 is just v, and 20 over 2 is just 10. So you can see that you don't have to stick to a very specific order of things as long as you're doing things mathematically sound. If you can reduce without cross multiplying, and that's easier for you, go ahead. Cross multiplication is just a good tool that should work all of the time, and it should make it a little easier to see. But with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem. Again, a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Setting up my parent triangle, the 1 is across from the 30, the 2 is across from the 90, the 2 is the hypotenuse always, and the rad 3 is across from the 60. Setting up my proportions, I end up with n over 1 equals 4 over rad 3. Uh, we could cross multiply. That's fine if we do, but I notice that n over 1 is just n. So I'm just going to go straight to this side. I'm going to rationalize the denominator. I would end up with 4 rad 3 over 3, and that can't be reduced, so that's my answer for n. For m, it would be m over 2 equals 4 over rad 3. Here I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply, so I end up with m rad 3 equals 8. We'll divide by rad 3 on both sides, so we end up with m equals 8 over rad 3. Now we need to rationalize, so we multiply by rad 3 over rad 3, so we end up with 8 rad 3 over 3. Just a, a point to note here, we notice that the, the 1 and the 2, how are those related? Well, the 2 is twice the value of the 1 which means in this triangle over here, you should have that same relationship. The m should be twice the value of n. And look, it is. m is 8 rad 3 over 3, which is exactly twice the value of 4 rad 3 over 3. All right, that's number 7. Let's go on to a different topic now. Not really a different topic. It's actually more broad of the same topic. We're going to expand our, our view of right triangles, and instead of looking at special right triangles, we're going to look at any right triangles. So as long as we have a right angle here, we can find missing sides. We can't use our parent triangles because those are the special ones. We have to use our trig ratios. So you remember that uh, using trig, we have that acronym. The acronym was SOKATOA. SOKATOA. Anyways, remember how to spell it. It's S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -H -H and that's going to help us identify which trig function we're going to use to find the missing sides or the missing angle. So in this case, we notice that the 51 degrees is given. Now, I can find the other angle, but I'm not asking for that, so I don't really care about that. I'm going to go ahead and find this side. Well, if this is the angle I'm concerned with, if this is my reference angle, as you would say, the x is the adjacent side. It's the side that's touching the reference angle. And the 10 is the hypotenuse because it's across from the 90. It's the longest side. So we'd ask ourselves now which trig function we would use. Well, we're talking about the a and the h. So we go over here to our acronym. We see a and h. So we would use the C or the cosine. So we say cosine of the angle, cosine of 51, is equal to x over 10. From here, we'd get our calculator out and just type in cosine of 51. Cosine of 51, you, when you type that in, is 0.629. And that's rounded. I know that it goes on beyond that. And you should keep that in your calculator. I just wrote down the first three, or I rounded to the, the first the thousandth. 
but keep that number in the calculator. From here, we're going to do the same thing that we've done all along. We're going to cross multiply. So we'll put the, the decimal over 1 and then cross multiply. 0 0.629 times 10 is actually 6.293. So I added an, another digit there because that decimal got moved over 1. So I'm just using my calculator values here. X times 1 is just X. And then in this particular problem, uh, it said round your answer to the nearest tenth in your problem. So when I round this to the nearest tenth, I end up with 6.3. For number 9, same type of thing. This is going to be trigonometry. So we're going to identify the two sides. The X is the hypotenuse, and the 11 is the adjacent. The adjacent is the side that is touching the reference angle. Okay, or another way of saying that is that the adjacent side is the side that is between the indicated angle and the 90 degree angle. Okay, this side is not between the indicated angle and the 90 degree angle. It is opposite to the indicated angle. So here again is going to be cosine because we're dealing with A over H. But notice what we have here. We have the adjacent is 11 and the hypotenuse is x. So I have to set it up in the same way the acronym says, A over H. It's not letter over number. Don't fall into that trap. It is A over H. Just like in the Pythagorean theorem, it's not a set number squared plus number squared equals letter squared. No, it's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And you put the variable wherever it belongs. In this case, the variable belongs on the bottom. Now we're going to go about uh, solving this, so we're going to type into our calculator, cosine 29, we end up with 0.875. From here we're going to cross multiply. Notice when we're cross multiplying here, it's not the same as it was in number 8. In number 8 we were multiplying two numbers. In this case we're multiplying a number and a variable, so 0.875 times x is just 0.875x. And then 11 times 1 is 11. Well, how do we solve from, for x from here? We would divide both sides by 0.875. So we end up with 11 divided by 0.875, which is 12.577. We round that to the nearest tenth, and we end up with 12.6. All right, for number 10, uh, I, go, I went ahead and wrote down the trig acronym again, so we can use that. The 10 this time, the 10 is not adjacent to the angle. It's not touching the angle. It is opposite to the angle. So we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. In our trig acronym, opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So it would be sine of 53 equals 10 over x because it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Type that into my calculator. I got 0.799. Put it over 1. Cross multiply. I end up with 0.799x equals 10. Divide by 0.799. When you type this into your calculator, make sure you're typing it incorrectly. It's always the numerator, the top number, divided by the denominator, the bottom number. So when we divide this, we end up with 12.521. And when we round that, we end up with 12.5. For number 11, identifying the parts again, where is the 16? The 16 is the hypotenuse. That one's easy. It's always across from the 90. Where is the x? The x is the x between the indicated angle and the 90. No, then it's not the adjacent. It is the opposite. It's the side that's across from, opposite to the indicated angle. So again, that's opposite and hypotenuse, which is sine again. So it'd be sine of 56, and in this case it's x over 16 because the opposite goes on top. Sine of 56 is 0.829. Put it over one, cross multiply. This one's easier because 0.829 times 16 is a number. We end up with 13.265 equals x. And then rounding that, we end up with 13.3. All right, for number 12, again, trigonometry. The x is the opposite side, and the 15 is the adjacent. So using the trig acronym, SOCA TOA OA OA, that's tangent. Tangent of 18 equals x over 15. Tangent of 18 in our calculator is 0.325. Put it over 1 and cross multiply. We end up with 4.874 equals x. And we're going to round that to the nearest tenth, so we end up with 4.9. For number 13, the x is the adjacent side. 
and the 20 is the opposite side. Notice the adjacent side because it is between the indicated angle and the 90 degree angle. The opposite side is because it's opposite to the indicated angle or it's between the 90 degree angle and the missing angle if you want to say that. But again, this will be tangent, so tangent of 58 equals 20 over x. Tangent of 58 is 1.600 something. Put it over 1, cross multiply, we end up with 1.600 something. x equals 20. We'll divide by 1.600, and then typing that in my calculator, I end up with 12.497. And then rounding that to the nearest tenth, we end up with 12.5. All right, let's move on to a different um, idea with right triangles. In number 14, we are looking for a missing angle. This is a different type of problem in the sense that we're not looking for the sides anymore. We can find this missing side. We can't use trigonometry to find this missing side because we don't have the angle. How do we find the missing side if I know the other two sides? That's right, the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem was the first problem we did today. So we would set this up by saying 17 squared plus uh, something squared equals 24 squared if I was looking for the missing leg. But I'm not. I'm looking for the angle. So I'm going to approach this the same way as trigonometry. Where's the 17? The 17 uh, is adjacent to the indicated angle, and the 24 is the hypotenuse. So that's going to be cosine. Remember, it's always cosine or sine or tangent of the angle. Well, I don't know the angle this time, so I'm going to just call it x. It's going to be the cosine of x, cosine of the angle, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, 17 over 24. Well, if I have cosine of x equals 17 over 24, we have to ask ourselves, what are we trying to get by itself? We're trying to get x by itself. So then we ask ourselves, what do I need to get rid of to get x by itself? I need to get rid of the cosine. Well, how do I get rid of cosine? And, and half the class says, divide by cosine. No, 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 no. You have to understand that we are not multiplying cosine times x. We're taking the cosine of x. So we're, cosine is an operation. How do I get rid of cosine? It's the same as saying, how do I get rid of multiplication. How do I get rid of the operation? I may have a 3 there and I'm multiplying it by x. So I would have 3 times x. How do I get rid of the 3? I divide by 3 because I'm getting rid of multiplication. I'm not getting rid of the 3. I'm getting rid of multiplication is, is really what's happening. So how do I get rid of this cosine? Remember to get rid of the cosine you take the arc cosine. And then in algebra we have this rule that says Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So the other side is going to say the arc cosine of 17 over 24. So notice I just moved the 17 over 24 a little bit uh, to the right so I could fit that arc cosine in there. Well, what happens? The arc cosine of the cosine cancel each other out, and we're left with x. So we have x equals the arc cosine of 17 over 24, well, typing in my calculator, 17 over 24 is 0.708. And from here, all I have to do is hit the arc cosine function. Make sure you're hitting the inverse or the second or the shift button first because you need to get to the arc trig functions. You don't want to just hit cosine. You want to hit second cosine to get to the inverse functions. As a result of this, we end up with 44.901. And then in these problems, it says round to the nearest degree, which means round to the nearest whole number. And so we'd end up with 45 degrees. All right, for the last problem in this uh, first review, we're going to approach this the same way. Where is the 36? The 36 is between the indicated angle and the 90 degree angle. So the 36 is adjacent. Where's the 23? Well, the 23 is opposite to the indicated angle, so it's the opposite. And obviously the other side's the hypotenuse, but I don't really care about it because I'm not asking for it and I'm not given anything about it. So which trig function we're going to use? We're going to use tangent. So it'll be tangent of x, tangent of the thing that I don't know, the thing that I'm looking for, the angle, is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 23 over 36. How do I get rid of the tangent? Because I want x by itself. I'm going to take the arc tangent of both sides, 
and then those end up canceling each other out, and we're left with x equals the arctangent of 23 over 36, which is 0.639, and then when I take the arctangent of that, I end up with 32.574, rounding that to the nearest whole degree, you end up with 33 degrees. All right, that's the first uh, set of problems for your review for basically this year. This is a really basic review. Obviously, we've covered a lot more things that than we're going to cover in these next three days, but these are the big things moving, moving on into Math 3. So I hope you understand this stuff. If you don't, make sure you're logging into our digital meetings and asking questions, but otherwise, uh, I will talk to you all later.